Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. This is the post-fight review for three fights in Germany. Well, two and a half really, because I only caught half or the last couple of rounds of the Mikael Wallisch vs. Knife DDA fight. Uh, but first off, we'll start with Victor Vickerst vs. Wilma Vasquez. Then moving on to Ali Aaron Demerijan, he was facing Nikola Milicic. So this fight with Victor Vickerst, who is known as Victor Faust in Germany, that's how they're marketing him to the German public. Possibly one of the most uninspiring and limp, lame sort of efforts from a prospect that I can remember in quite some considerable time. Bearing in mind Victor Vickerst, a very talented uh, former amateur, he's been coming through the pros, he's looked pretty good, he dealt with Kamil Sokolowski pretty comfortably enough in a former fight, 5-0 and heading into this fight with um, a pretty... Um, limited Wilma Vasquez, who even though he was unbeaten with a record of 13 wins, zero losses and two draws, it was a highly padded record, pretty looking record, but nothing there. This should have been a fight where Victor Vickerst went in there and basically dismantled him and potentially took him out later in the fight. But it did not end up going that way. Victor Vickerst put on one of the most subpar performances for a talented, talented prospect that I can remember for some time. It really was um, like a leisurely sparring session. He was just sleepwalking through the fight. No urgency, no sort of will to sort of really try to break this guy down. There was a lot of time where you were like, these guys just are just standing in front of each other, looking at each other. Um, early on, Victor Vickers, the first couple of rounds, you know, the jab was looking good. And I was thinking he's looking a little bit sort of um, Vitaly Klitschko-esque with his movement. You know, the jab, the way it was sort of splitting the guard, just some of the stuff that he was doing. But he just never sort of got out of, I don't want to even say first gear. I want to say half gear because it was at such a sedate pace. It only suited the fight plan of Vilma Vasquez, Wilma Vasquez, I should say, which was a lunging left hook, the occasional jab. And sometimes when he did that lunging left hook, he would look for an overhand right as well. I think I counted maybe three left hooks that Wilma Vasquez landed throughout the fight, which was, you know, his primary punch that he was looking to do damage with. But Vickerst, for the most part, you know, he was up on his um, sort of toes, bouncing around, throwing the odd jab, but it was just so bad. I just, you know, it was very hard to watch, knowing what this guy can do, having seen him from the amateurs, having seen some of his former fights. I mean, Camille Sokolowski would have taken Wilma Vasquez out, and um, Vickers dealt with uh, Sokolowski with ease in the end, took him to a decision, but he was comfortable in that fight. But this one, I don't know if both his hands were broken and he was not wanting to throw punches, but it something just was completely off no urgency until about the seventh round and even then it was fleeting in the eighth round for about a minute or so he sort of turned up the tempo a little bit but uh, it ended up just sort of limping to an eight round decision all three scorecards 80 72 I mean, Vasquez never got close to winning a round, but it was a case that you know Victor Vickhurst I mean the only thing he got out of this was the rounds because any buzz or hype that he had coming into this fight, he's just torpedoed himself and sort of killed that buzz through this performance. It really was not a good fight, not a good performance. And yeah, I, I almost wish that I'd actually missed it. I mean, I had a little trouble getting on to watching this card, but eventually when I did, I caught through the um, partway through the Wallish fight. But yeah, if I'd have missed this, I would, you know, and not seen it. I think I would have been the better for it in terms of my Sunday morning. This was a case, Vasquez was there to be hit and hit often, just didn't push the pace. And with his 39-year-old legs and his limited, uh, clearly limited skill set, all Victor, Victor Vickers had to do was push the pace. And you could see that Vasquez was going to gas out, as it was. He looked gassed through much of the fight, but 
Vickers, for whatever reason, just didn't want to do anything. There was just, you know, jab, jab, the old right hand, the old uppercut, but it was sleepwalking right throughout the fight. Very disappointed effort. Um, completely lays an egg in this one. So I don't know what was going on, but um, yeah, not impressed. And on the strength of that, I mean, I would have to sort of remove him from my sort of top prospects to watch because that was such an insipid effort. I can't stress that enough. Uh, getting to the next fight that was on the card, which was the co-main event. Actually, where am I here with my notes? So Ali Aaron Demerijan. And so this was actually a late replacement in Nikola Milicic. I mean, so late, in fact, that his former um, opponent, um, Piercek, had actually weighed in. But uh, perhaps this was going to be a better fight because um, Piercek was a 47-year-old guy with an unbeaten record. And here's the actually the promo post. And as I joked on Twitter, in Fight Week, it looked like they'd used one of those age apps for Piercek in particular because he looked about 70 years years old but here's a photo that was from the weigh-in but then all of a sudden you know they'll come into the ring and it's uh, Nikola Milicic so I don't speak um so I had a Turkish feed I don't speak I don't know what happened with the the late replacement whether he was pulled from the card for medical reasons or injury I don't know but uh, it was a new opponent and I actually thought this fight here I mean it was another very forgettable sort of couple of rounds for the most part uh, Milicic, you could have argued, won that first round. He was sort of pressing forward. Uh, he was using his height and reach movement, jabbing. He seemed to be having more success than Demerijan. But you kind of got the impression that did he really want to be there for the long haul? And he did end up sort of in the second round, because this was all over in two. Um, it was a glancing sort of left hook on sort of the top of the head, and he goes down. And at the time, I thought, that looks a bit soft. And then the second knockdown was, um, there was a few punches come in, but nothing really landed except this body shot here on screen. It was very soft. And then the third knockdown looked more legitimate. It was an uppercut. But after about the first knockdown, I sort of thought, nah, he doesn't want to be there. This is going to be all over very shortly. And it was just delayed a little bit because of the knockdowns, but the referee ended up waving it off. But for the most part, in the first round, round and a half, these guys were throwing shots and 95% of it was seemed to be aimed at gloves or something. It didn't look like they were really trying to hit each other. It was just such a strange fight just to watch the first bit. I was just like, what is this? I don't know. Maybe I woke up in some, some sort of mood this morning and was just hypercritical of some of these guys, but it wasn't a very entertaining fight to watch until the knockdown started happening. But even then, I was like, it started to be like, is, is this legit? It, certainly, it looked very, very soft. But um, yeah, so Demerijan, he advances, he picks up some sort of WBO trinket. Um, him and also um, Mikael Wallish, at some point, I'd imagine in 2021, they'll be on some bigger cards as opponents. Um, Demerijan, he's got the potential to be a very good gatekeeper. He's got a, a very good chin and he's um, just throws a lot of punches. He's um, actually quite good when he's got a good opponent in front of him. We saw that with the FA Ajagba uh, fight. Ajagba won that and there was no real controversy with the decision, but it was a fun fight to watch, about 2,000 punches thrown. And that Wallace fight, which I'll just sort of round out here, so I only caught the last couple of rounds of this, but his opponent, Knife Didier, and that's quite a cool name, um, he actually, for the pretty much the entire time I was watching this, I was thinking, he doesn't want to be there. He's looking for a way out. Um, and eventually he got his wish in the sixth round, sixth and final round. Um, the, it was waved off. There was a few shots that came in from Wallace and um, the referee sort of uh, ended it when uh, DDS sort of um, not sunk to his haunches, but just, you know, gave off some really bad body language and just sort of withdrew for a second. Um, yeah, so very forgettable and disappointing card overall, I've got to say. But um, yeah, I sort of, um, but I'm putting in the, um, the effort here to give you these post-fight reviews. What did you make of it all if you caught it? And if you didn't, you might be glad that you missed it. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.